Welcome to topic number 37 in Richard James Mathematics Resources. This one is entitled Circle Theorem. The circle is one of the most popular of geometrical shapes. Therefore, the more we know about it, the better we will be able to design, construct, and analyze geometrical representations. There is hardly any designer who does not make use of circle or arcs. Knowledge is power and the more we know, the more we will be able to amaze people who don't. Dan Brown in his book The Da Vinci Code pointed out that there is a particular number that represents proportions in nature and man-made designs. Great artists like Leonardo da Vinci and Michelangelo have made use of the number in their work. That is one of, if not the greatest aspect of their work that has the entire world amazed today and will continue to impress humanity throughout eternity. There is a reason for their greatness and it is not beyond the grasp of ordinary people. The difference is, they know and we do not. Make use of circle theorem and you will also marvel the world with your design. Along with the long-term benefits of having the knowledge, examiners are taking the opportunity to test some of your mental abilities. They include your ability to think, remember and identify familiar circumstances in a crafty disguise. Remember what I said about the puzzle in the children's own? How highly mathematical it is? Problems on this topic is a verification of that fact. Our first rule that we'll be looking at has to do with angles that are subtended by the same arc. So we have, if two angles are subtended by the same arc, the one at the center is twice the one at the circumference. So we are just assuming that the two angles that we have, one is at the center and one is at the circumference. So let us consider an arc of the circle. It can be shown to subtend an angle that is at the center. So there is your angle that is at the center. And of course, it may also be shown to subtend an angle that is at the circumference. This being the case, the angle at the center is twice the one at the circumference. So let the angle at the circumference be A. So there's your angle at the circumference. The one that is at the center is therefore twice that one, so it is 2A. This is true no matter how awkward the arrangement seems to be. The next slide will have some arrangements that look somewhat strange. If two angles are subtended by the same arc, the one at the center is twice the one at the circumference. And that is the same rule that we have looked at on the previous slide. In this case, the arc is only wider. So we are looking at the same rule, same set of circumstances with the exception that the arc is a little bit wider. So let it subtend an angle at the center. Good. Let it also subtend an angle that is at the circumference. Just like before, the same is true. The one at the center is twice the one at the circumference. So if the one at the circumference is A, the one at the center is 2A. Let us see what will be new in this case. Insert the angle that is subtended at the center. So there's your angle. And insert the one subtended at the circumference. Right. Although one of the rays in the angle at the circumference intersects with one of the rays in the angle at the center, the principle still holds. That what? If the one at the circumference is A, the one at the center is twice that one, which is 2A.
if two angles are subtended by the same arc, the one at the center is twice the one at the circumference. The arc in question will be more than half of the circumference of the circle. According to number 19, it is a major arc. The angle at the center that is subtended by that arc will therefore be reflex. Include also the angle that it subtends at the circumference. In this case also, the angle at the center is twice the one at the circumference. So, although we have here a reflex angle at the center, because the arc that we are considering is a major arc, the rule still holds that the angle at the center is twice the one at the circumference. Look out for some visually challenging situations in the exercise section. All of the questions will be based on the simple rules, but some of them will require more than a second look in order that we may decipher them. Because the way that I receive and process information is not so visually strong, my students always outdo me in this topic. I always ask them to show me an easier way out, and they always rise to the occasion. If two angles are subtended by the same arc, the one at the center is twice the one at the circumference. So that is the rule that we are looking at. But we are looking to see if there is a flaw in the rule or when do we or do not apply the rule. In the diagram, the arc is subtended by two angles, one at the circumference and one at the center as before. Why is the situation in violation of the rule and the angles cannot be A and 2A as we have them right here? So, this is A and this is 2A. But if that is the case, the one at the center, notice that the one at the center is smaller than the one at the circumference. So, how comes we have 2A here and A here? Let's see if what we have is in violation of the basic rule. Remember, the angle at the center must be twice the one at the circumference. Now we have this angle at the center and it cannot possibly be twice this one. So we may be able to make the observation that the angle at the circumference is reflex while the one at the center is obtuse. Reflex angles are always larger than obtuse angles. It is impossible for the one at the center which is obtuse to be twice the one at the circumference which is reflex. It is impossible for this one that is obtuse to be twice this one that is reflex. But the rule says that the angle at the center is twice the one at the circumference. What is the problem? So is it that the law does not hold all the time? Nothing is wrong with the rule. The rule requires that both angles are inside of the circle and the angle at the circumference is not inside the circle. When answering questions with angles that are subtended by the same arc at the circumference and at the center, ensure that they are both inside of the circle. Now we have a corollary that is somewhat another rule that follows from a previous one. So the angle at the circumference that is subtended by a diameter is equal to 90 degrees. If we have an angle that is subtended by a diameter, that angle has to be 90 degrees. If the arc that is in question is a semicircle, then the rays that form the angle that is subtends at the center will form a straight line. So if the arc is a semicircle, the rays that form the angle that it subtends at the center will form a straight line. So that is our straight line. The straight line will pass through the center of the circle and will therefore be a diameter. 
the angle on the straight line is equal to any angle on a straight line is equal to 180 degrees but what do we know according to the rule if two angles are subtended by the same arc the one at the center is twice the one at the circumference the one at the center being 180 degrees it follows that the one at the circumference is 90 degrees so if we have a straight line straight across the center of the circle the angle that we assume here is 180 degrees therefore the one at the center must be twice the one at the circumference therefore the one at the circumference has to be 90 degrees therefore as long as we have a diameter any angle that is subtended by a diameter has to be 90 degrees the angle that is subtended by a diameter is therefore equal to 90 degrees and of course that is a right angle and of course it doesn't matter the angle at the circumference that is subtended by a diameter is always 90 degrees irrespective of the position inside of the circle the angle at the circumference that is subtended by a diameter is always equal to 90 degrees and we have some situations here this angle is very acute but as long as we have a diameter here and this is the angle that is subtended by the diameter we are sure that this angle is 90 degrees and of course we have another one down here we have other diagrams but the same thing is true the angle is subtending a diameter therefore this one is 90 degrees this one also is 90 degrees if two angles at the circumference are subtended by the same arc then the two angles are equal so if two angles at the circumference are subtended by the same arc then the two angles are equal we may say that angles in the same segment are equal so let us show the arc under consideration we have our arc right there so let us show the first angle at the circumference that it subtends so that is the first angle that is subtended by that arc and then we may show another angle at the circumference that is subtended by that same arc right what do we know the angles at the circumference are subtended by the same arc and are therefore equal so if one is a the other is equal to a they are equal subtended by the same arc what do we mean by the angles are in the same segment the angles are also subtended by a chord that divides the circle into two segments so that is your chord and we know from number 19 that the chord divides the circle into two segments a major and a minor segment one of those segments contain both angles which is that one so this is our segment this one in bright yellow and of course the two angles are inside of that segment they are therefore equal so let us show an arc and the two angles that it subtends the two angles are equal so let them be equal to a there is another arc that is subtended by two other angles so there is that other arc that we have just spoken about and where are the two angles well we are going to do a little highlighting for us to see so let us show the first angle and call it B right let us show the other angle it is equal to the first and is therefore equal to B also so there's the other one and B the second pair of angles are no doubt in the same segment right so we have them in that segment it will serve us a great deal of good to remember that when we have a pair of equal angles in the same segment there's another pair of angles in another segment 
a tangent to a circle is perpendicular to the radius that is drawn from the point of tangency. A tangent to a circle or any curve for that matter is a line that touches the curve or circle at only one point. Alright, so that is your tangent, goes to the circle, touches it at one point, and then it continues on its merry way. A radius that is drawn from the point of tangency is perpendicular to the tangent. So if a radius of this circle is going to come and meet the circle at the point where the tangent touches the circle, then that radius is perpendicular to the tangent. So there's our indication of a pair of perpendicular lines. When you move to the next level of mathematics, you will encounter studies about tangents and normals. It will then be easy for you to understand that a tangent to a circle and its associated radius must always be perpendicular to each other. The radius is always normal to the circle. That is, the radius is always perpendicular to the circumference of the circle at that point of intersection. To be normal is to be perpendicular to. If two tangents to the same circle have a common vertex, they are equal in length. So let us show the tangents that have a common vertex A. So B and C are the points of tangency. Put those in. AB is equal to AC. So from A to B is equal to the distance from A to C. Consequently, if we join B to C with a straight line, the triangle so formed will be isosceles. So that triangle is isosceles with these two sides always equal. The angle at the circumference that is subtended by a chord is equal to the angle that the chord makes with a tangent. So that seems like a bit of code, but let us see what that means. So let us show a tangent that meets a chord and the angle that the tangent makes with the chord. So here we have a chord and here we have a tangent. So the chord and the tangents are meeting right there. So let us show an angle in the other segment. There the segment and there's your angle. The two angles are equal. So the one that the tangent makes with the chord is equal to the one that is subtended by the chord from the circumference. So A, A. Okay. The angle is formed by the tangent and the chord. That is the angle that is formed by the tangent and the chord. The other one is the angle that is subtended by the chord at the circumference. So the angle that the tangent makes with the chord is equal to the angle that is subtended by the chord at the circumference. So the angle is formed by the tangent and the chord. The other one is the angle that is subtended by the chord at the circumference, and they are equal. Corollary. That means something that follows from the one that we had on the previous slide. The angle at the center that is subtended by a chord is twice the angle that the chord makes with a tangent. So, show a tangent that meets a chord and the angle that the tangent makes with the chord. There it is. So we have our angle that is represented by the tangent and the chord. So let us also show an angle in the other segment. So that is the angle. What do we know? The two angles are equal because the angle that the tangent makes with the chord is equal to the angle that the chord subtends at the circumference. So, let us show the angle that is subtended by the chord at the center. So there it is, the angle that is subtended by the chord at the center. 
same card, but from a previous rule, we know that if two angles are subtended by the same arc, the one at the center is twice the one at the circumference. So, we have a single card. The angle at the center that is subtended by this card is twice the angle that is subtended by the same card from the circumference. It therefore follows that the angle that is subtended by a card at the center is also twice the angle that the card makes with the tangent. So therefore, this angle must be twice this also. So if these two are equal, we are sure that they are equal. The angle that the tangent makes with the card is equal to the angle that the card subtends at the circumference. But we also know that in that particular case, if there is an angle that is subtended by the same card at the center, the one at the center is twice the one at the circumference. Therefore, the one at the center subtended by the card must also be twice the one that the card makes with the tangent. In the presentation, an angle was described as being subtended by an arc. At another time, it was described as being subtended by a card. There is no harm or contradiction in using one or the other. This is because any two distinct points on the circumference of a circle always have an associated arc and an associated card. Right. So these two points on the circumference has an associated chord and has an associated arc. Therefore, any angle that this chord subtends must be equal to the same angle that this arc subtends. Now we are going to be looking at cyclic quadrilaterals. A cyclic quadrilateral is a four-sided figure with all vertices in contact with a single circle. So we have all the vertices in contact with the circumference of the circle. A cyclic quad may also be formed with one side being a diameter of the circle. So it does not matter. We have this side a diameter. However, we have one, two, three vertices in contact with the circumference of a circle so we know that it is a cyclic quad a cyclic quad may be entirely within one half of a circle like that so we have this entirely in one half of a circle but it still will be a cyclic quad irrespective of their positions inside of the circle the rules that apply to cyclic quadrilaterals are universal Opposite angles in a cyclic quad are supplementary. That means they add to give 180 degrees. A plus C is 180 degrees. B plus D is 180 degrees. So let us insert an external angle at the vertex D and call it E. We are going to call the one at D external to the cyclic quad. We are going to call that E. We know that B plus D is equal to 180 degrees. So we know that B plus D, these two will add to give 180 degrees. D and E are angles on a straight line. So D plus E is equal to 180 degrees. Both sums are equal to 180 degrees and are therefore equal to each other. So if B plus D is 180 degrees and D plus E is 180 degrees, that means B plus D must be equal to D plus E. If we simplify this equation, we get 
B is equal to E. Those two are equal. It follows therefore that in a cyclic quadrilateral, any internal angle is equal to the exterior opposite angle. That means we know that these two are on a straight line, so they are equal to 180 degrees. And we also know that opposite angles of a cyclic quad are to give 180 degrees. Therefore, these two angles must be equal. So, it follows therefore that in a cyclic quadrilateral, any internal angle is equal to the exterior opposite angle. We are at our exercises and we will see how the rules are applied. A, B, C, D, E, as we have A, B, C, D, E, is a pentagon inscribed in a circle of center O. The diameter AD is produced to F. That means the diameter AD is continued to F. Angle C, D, F, C, D, F, and it is going to be good if we can always remember that the angle C, D, F, the middle letter represents the vertex where the angle is located. So C, D, F, we have C, D, F, the angle is located at D. And that angle is 130 degrees, and the angle B, A, D is 72 degrees. B, A, D. So the vertex where the angle is located is the middle one, so the angle is located at A. So what it says, calculate C, D, A, B, C, D, and A, E, D. Now, usually in an examination, it always says, calculate giving reasons. So let us calculate C, D, A. C, D, and A. That's not very difficult because we have C, D, A is on this straight line and the angle right here, C, D, F is 136 degrees. So C, D, A and C, D, F are angles on a straight line. C, D, A and C, D, F are on the same straight line and therefore are supplementary. So that one, 136 degrees, is supplementary to the other one. So C, D, A plus 136 is equal to 180 degrees. And if we simplify that little simple linear equation, we get C, D, A is 44 degrees. And it goes right there. So, of course, we are adding 136 on this side. We are subtracting on the other side. The result is 44. Now we are going to find B, C, D. It will serve us to see that A, B, C, D is a cyclic quadrilateral. Therefore, if we are going to find B, C, D, which is B, C, D is equal to, we have B, A, D is 72 degrees. And of course, we have a little cyclic quad in this half of this circle. We have a cyclic quad there. Therefore, this 72 degrees is the opposite angle to B, C, D, which is this angle. And of course, opposite angles of a cyclic quad are supplementary. So we can say that B, C, D, B, C, D, which is this angle, when we add that to 72 degrees, which is the angle that is opposite to it, we will get 180 degrees. So BCD is equal to 180 minus 72, and BCD is equal to 108 degrees. AED is subtended by a diameter and is therefore a right angle. So AED, AED, notice that it is a triangle that is formed with one side being a diameter and the vertex E is on the circumference. Therefore, we are sure that AED is a right angle 90 degrees. Right. AED is equal to 90 degrees. 
RS is a tangent to the circle. Here we have RS, a tangent to the circle. The chords SN and MP intersect at Q. That is SN and MP intersect at Q. So this little point right here is Q. So this and this intersect at Q. The chord MQP produced meets the tangent SR at R. So if we produce this chord if we produce this chord all the way across here it will meet the tangent according to the information that we have there at R. Angle SRP S R P is this one at R because the middle letter always represents the position of the angle. So the angle is at R and that angle is according to the information here 26 degrees. QMS is 52 degrees. So from QMS is 52 degrees and PQS is 76 degrees. PQS P Q S that angle that we have right there that we hardly have space for on diagram is 76 degrees. What do we find first? We are going to calculate MSQ first. That is the angle MSQ M S Q. That is the angle that we need to calculate first. M S Q. But what do you notice? Well, it would serve us well to notice that we have two triangles right here. We have one like this. Notice this one. We have one here. In this triangle, the only angle is missing is this angle here. So in this angle goes from Q S R. So in that angle, this is the angle that is missing. And we have another triangle, this big one, all the way across. In that triangle, only this angle up here is missing. So let us see if we can use some technology in pointing that out to us. To find MSQ, we have to consider two triangles. The first one will be used to determine MSR. Right? So we need to find MSQ, but we are finding MSR first. So MSR is this big unknown angle that we have here. Okay? Right, this big unknown angle. So that is MSR. And what is that angle? We know that angles in a triangle add to give 180 degrees. So we need to ensure that we have an equation in which the two angles 52 and 26 that those two angles are in this big triangle so this big angle that we have here is going to be calculated by using this expression and of course to find MSR we will transpose these two positive numbers to the right hand side and this is what we get and finally MSR is 102 degrees good of course, we are going to make use of the other triangle, QSR, which is QSR. QSR, that one. And the only angle that is missing there is this one here. So, the other triangle is QSR, in which we need to find the angle QSR. There it is. And the only angle that is missing is this one here. We have a knowledge of this angle, 76 degrees, and this one, 26 degrees. So when we add them together, we get 180 as usual, and we just make the simple transposition, and that angle is 78 degrees. Right. Which angle do we need? M, S, Q. So we need M, S, Q. M, S, Q. This angle right here we need. 
but we know that the entire angle is 102 degrees and all the way here is 78 degrees therefore the one that is on this side is the difference between 78 and 102 so MSQ is the difference between the two angles so 102 minus 78 and that is 24 degrees Now we need to calculate R S P. R S P. Oh dear. In this horrible looking diagram, that is going to be impossible. Okay. Now do not forget that this is a tangent. So this line SR is a tangent to the circle. SR is a tangent to the circle. So SR is a tangent to the circle. And of course, what do we know? The angle that is required is RSP. R S P. So we need R S P and this is the chord. Now we have a rule that concerns what? The angle that a tangent makes with a chord. Do you remember that one? Of course you do. So the angle that we want is RSP, which is the angle that the tangent makes with the chord. So the angle QMS at the circumference, where is it? QMS. See that angle? Q M S. I think that that angle would be the same angle and it would be more appropriately called P M S. So the angle Q M S, which is the same as P M S at the circumference that is subtended by a chord. This is the chord. So the angle P MS is subtended by this chord is equal to the angle PSR PSR that the chord makes with the tangent. So let's see if we can take a second look at that. The angle that is required is PSR which is the angle that the chord makes with the tangent and that is going to be equal to the angle that the chord subtends at the circumference. So the angle that we have that the chord subtends at the circumference is 52 degrees and P S R or R S P is that same angle that we have there that the tangent makes with the chord and it's equal to the angle that is subtended by the chord at the circumference. So those two angles are equal. R S P is 52 degrees. We are now going to calculate angle SPN. And there should be a very good reason why we are reminded about this angle here, 78 degrees. But let's see if it does matter. So we need to calculate SPN. We need to make use of the fact that SPN is the angle that is opposite to SMN in the cyclic quad, MSPN. So we have what? We want to find SPN, 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 and it is opposite to which one? This one, SMN. So the one that we want to find is this one right here, SPN, and it is opposite to this one. But do not be blinded by the 52 degrees because the 52 degrees is not the one that is in the cyclic quad. The angle that we really want is this one here. Not the 52 degrees, the one that comes all the way around here. But can we find that angle? Of course we can, and that is why we are reminded about this angle here. So there's your card so we have drawn a card here 
So this card, the angle that subtends this card, is 78 degrees. This is 78 degrees. This angle that we have here, which is the angle that the tangent makes with the card, is equal to the angle that is subtended by the card at the circumference. So this angle, the angle that the tangent makes with the card, is equal to this angle that we have over here, which is not this one, as we'll soon see. We'll remove this one and show the exact one that we want. The angle SMN at the circumference that is subtended by a card is equal to the angle RSN, which is, we have that already, 78 degrees, that the card makes with the tangent. So, this one is equal to this one. There it is. Those two angles are equal. This is your card, and the tangent makes that angle with the card. This is your card, and that card subtends this angle at the circumference. They are equal. Therefore, we may find this angle here now. We may find SPN. How? Because we have one, two, three, four sides. And four vertices touching the circumference of that single circle. So we are sure that this is a cyclic quad. Therefore, SPN and SMN which we know to be 78 degrees, are supplementary. So these two angles are supplementary. They add to give 180 degrees. So when we subtract them, we get SPN is equal to 102 degrees. And I'm sure that if I had some of my students viewing this, they would have been able to figure that this angle is equal to 102 degrees. A long time before I'm able to even start to analyze this diagram. PQR is a circle with center O. So that's our circle. And that's the center O. Angle PQO is 53 degrees. That's the one that we have right there. PQO is 53 degrees. PO is parallel to QR. So PO is parallel to QR. So we have these arrows showing that these two lines are parallel. So we are to find POQ, P, O, Q. The triangle POQ is isosceles with OPQ equal OQP is equal to 53 degrees. So this is 53 degrees isosceles triangle. So this one is what? angle is 53 degrees. How do we know that it is isosceles? Because this goes to the center, so we know that it's a radius. This goes to the circumference, so we know that's a radius. So these two being radii, we are sure that they are equal in length, so we have an isosceles triangle. If this is 53, the one over here is also 53. And if that is the case, the angle POQ is the only one that is left in this triangle the smaller triangle that we have right here. So, of course, this being isosceles, POQ is 180 degrees. Take away the two angles that we know to be 53 degrees each. So, POQ is 74 degrees. PO is parallel to QR. So, this is parallel to this. We need to find OQR. So we are going to find OQR. OQR. These two lines are parallel. That makes POQ and OQR alternate angles. So we are sure that this angle here and this one are equal. We call them Z angles, but they are actually alternate angles. So they are equal. So OQR is 74 degrees. Now we are going to find PRQ. PRQ. POQ at the center and PQR at the circumference subtends the same arc. 
So there's your arc. There's your arc. And P O Q is subtending the arc. And P R Q is subtended by the same arc. The one at the center is twice the one at the circumference. This one is at the center, which is P O Q. It is twice P R Q, the one at the circumference. So we are going to say that the one at the circumference is half. So P O Q is twice P R Q, or we may say that P R Q is half of O Q R. So P Q R is equal to a half of 74 degrees, and that is equal to 37 degrees, and we are putting it right there. Now we are going to find Q, P, R, that is Q, P, R. Of course, we are finding Q, P, R, Q, P, R. This is the angle that we are going to find. However, that angle is in a triangle, Q, P, R. So that is a triangle right there. In that triangle, there is only one angle missing, which is this one. Because we know that this one big one that we have here is going to be the sum of 53 and 74. We are sure that this one is 37. So, all of these angles in the triangle should have to give 180 degrees. So, we are going to make use of that fact. So, making use of the angles that we have calculated so far, and the fact that the angles in a triangle are to give 180 degrees, we may find QPR. So there's your triangle. And the only angle is missing is QPR, which is this one. So QPR added to all the other angles equal 180. So we are going to transpose, subtracting all of those angles from 180. And QPR is therefore 16 degrees. A, B, C, T is a quadrilateral inscribed in a circle. So we know that it's a cyclic quad already. Very quickly. E, D is a tangent to the circle at T. Angle A, T, E is 70 degrees. A, T, E, 70 degrees with the middle letter represent the vertex at which the angle is present. Angle CTD, so we know that the vertex T is where the angle is at. CTD is 40 degrees. C, T, D, that's 40 degrees. And angle TAB is 84 degrees. T, A, B, 84 degrees. No problem? Calculate A, B, T. So we want to find A, B, T. So find A, B, T. A, B, T. Right. So no problem. We have a tangent right here. And we have a chord right here. So let us see what our information is saying. The angle A, B, T at the circumference that is subtended by the chord is equal to the angle E, T, A that the chord makes with the tangent. So then we want to find A, B, T. A, B, T. This is your chord. This is your tangent. This is your chord. This is your tangent. So the angle that the chord makes with the tangent is equal to the angle that is subtended by the chord at the circumference. The angle that this chord subtends is which one? A, B, T. So A, B, T is equal to 70 degrees. So that's your chord. That is subtended by A, B, T. So A, B, T is 70 degrees. B, T, C. In finding B, T, C. Where is B, T, C? Where are you? B, T, C. We need to find that one. B, T, C. In finding B, T, C, first find the remaining angle in the triangle A, B, T. One angle is missing, which is this one. 
But all of these angles are angles on a straight line. Can we see that? Angles on a straight line? Very good. So if we can find this one which is inside of this triangle, then we will automatically know this one. So let us find the angle, this one, that is missing inside of this triangle that we have here. And of course we have two angles and all of the angles will add to give 180. So we subtract and we get 26. So this angle right here is 26 degrees. All of these angles are on a straight line. So what is this angle going to be? So B, T, C is the remaining portion of the angle that is on the straight line. B, T, C. So it is the only one that is missing on that straight line. So we know that B, T, C is equal to all of these angles being subtracted from 180 degrees. That one is 44 degrees. Do we have anyone else to find? Right. We need C, D, T. C, D, T. How do we find C, D, T? Cyclic quad. So, ABCT is a cyclic quadrilateral. In finding CDT, we first need to find TCD. TCD. So we can find if we can find TCD, then we can find this angle because it is going to be the only angle that is left in the triangle. This is because in a cyclic quad, the interior is equal to the exterior opposite. So look, this is 84 degrees. The opposite one in the cyclic quad is this angle here. S this angle is the opposite. But the exterior opposite is this one. Therefore, this angle TCD is the one that is opposite, but this is the one that is exterior. So that is 84 degrees also. Right? The interior angle of a cyclic quad is equal to the exterior opposite. So angle CDT is the only unknown angle in the triangle. Right now, we have CDT is the only angle that is unknown in the triangle. And we have CDT is equal to 180 minus 84, of course, minus 40. And that is equal to 56 degrees. Now we are going to calculate angle POQ, but we need some information about what we are about to do. TP and TQ are tangents to the circle from a point T. So we have two tangents, one going here and the other one going like that down there. The circle has center O and the angle OMQ is 70 degrees. So this angle is 70 degrees and the center is O. Very nice that we have this center of the circle. This one cannot possibly give too much problem. We need to find POQ, which is P O Q. My my this one is going to prove to be difficult. I doubt it. So POQ is the angle at the center that is subtended by the card P Q and is equal to twice P M Q. That is the angle that is subtended by the same card at the circumference. So P O Q is the angle at the center that is subtended by the card. So we have P O Q and this is our card. This is the one that we did not bargain for. So P O Q is the angle at the center that is subtended by this same card. But the angle at the circumference is what? This one. See? P M Q. It is the same card. Notice this card subtended by this angle at the center subtended by this angle at the circumference. Therefore, the one at the center is twice the one at the circumference so we have 140 degrees there for POQ. How very nice. Now we are going to find MPQ. We are going to find MPQ. 
Now, it is strange that they ask for MPQ. And I think they're just disguising a very simple situation. Because it would be better to ask for O, well, easier for us to ask for O, P, Q. But they ask instead for M, P, Q, which is the same angle. So we have O, P, Q is the one that we want, but they ask you M, P, Q. So what is O, P, Q? We know that this angle here is 140 degrees. And we know that this triangle here is isosceles. Why? Because this goes to the circumference from the center. It is a radius. This goes from the center to the circumference. It's another radius. So this triangle here is an isosceles. So this angle here is equal to the one over there. And, of course, all of them will add to give 180 along with this 140 degrees. So PMQ is what? Subtract 140 from 180 and divide the result by 2. This is the angle in the isosceles triangle that we know. And these are the two equal angles. So we subtract this 140 from the 180, divide the result by 2, and we get 20 degrees. So MPQ is 20 degrees. And of course, its companion, our associated angle, is also 20 degrees. So we may just put 20 degrees in both places. Now we are going to find PTQ. Two of the sides of a triangle PQT are tangents to the circle. So we need to find PTQ, PTQ, this angle here. So these are tangent to the circle. What does that mean? If the two sides are tangent to the circle. Because they are tangent to the circle, this makes the triangle isosceles. Because this triangle that we have right here is isosceles with what? These two sides being equal. Two tangents to the same circle, if they are from the same point, will be equal in length. So we are sure that the triangle is isosceles. Now, they are saying that QPT is equal to 90 minus 20. So Q P T Q P T Notice this angle here, Q P T. What is the size of this angle? Do not forget that the tangent meets the radius at 90 degrees. Tangent meets radius at 90 degrees. So tangent is meeting the radius at 90 degrees but this angle here is 20 if this angle is 20 so q p t is 90 minus 20 which is equal to 70 but the triangle is isosceles so if this is 70 degrees this is also 70 do not forget tangent meets radius at 90 degrees this angle is 20 so this is 70 so we have 70 over here and 70 over here. And, of course, if we have these two angles in the triangle, then the rest is history. PTQ is the only unknown angle in the triangle. So, of course, it is going to be 180 minus 70 minus 70. So PTQ is 40 degrees. O is the center of the circle L, M, N, T. L, M, N, T. Of course, what do we know? Immediately, we start to think cyclic quadrilateral. And P, T, Q is a tangent to the circle at T. So, P, T, Q is a tangent to the circle. Good. At T. Angle L, T, Q is 65 degrees. L, T, Q is 65 degrees. L, T, Q is 65 degrees. So, let us move merrily on to find L, M, N. So, L, M, N. Very easy. L, M, N is an angle that is subtended by a diameter and is therefore a right angle. This is a diameter that subtends this angle. Therefore, this angle, L, M, N, has to be 90 degrees. So, L, M, N is 90 degrees. So the next thing that we are going to find is the angle LNT. The angle L 
NT at the circumference that is subtended by the chord LT is equal to the angle LTQ that the chord makes with the tangent. So, here is the chord and here is the tangent. So, the chord and the tangent makes an angle at 65 degrees. Therefore, the angle that the chord makes with the tangent is equal to the angle that is subtended by the chord at the circumference. So this is the angle that the chord subtends. The chord comes from here to there. So the angle that it subtends at the circumference is this angle here, which is L and T. So we are sure that L and T is 65 degrees. We need to look at TLN. T L N. So T L N, no problem with T L N either. T L N is the triangle in which L T N is subtended by a diameter and therefore L T N is 90 degrees. So we are going to find T L N, which is this one. T L N. We are going to find this angle. But this is an angle that is subtended by a diameter. Now notice that this is the diameter of the circle. Therefore, this angle is subtended by this diameter. Therefore, this is 90 degrees. If this is 90 degrees, this is 65 degrees, this angle is the difference. So we have 90 and 65 together to be subtracted from 180 because they are inside of this triangle. So that will give us this one. Or because this one is a right angle, we may subtract the 65 from 90 and we will get what this angle is. So TLN is the only unknown angle in the right angle triangle. So TLN is 90 minus 65 and TLN is 25 degrees. Now we are about to find T, P, N. But before finding T, P, N, we need to find N, T, P. Where is N, T, P? Okay, let us look at the one that we need to find first. We need to find T, P, N. So we need to find T, P, N. T, P, N. So we need to find TPN, but we are finding NTP first. What do we know about NTP? NTP is the angle that the chord makes with the tangent and is therefore equal to the angle that the chord subtends at the circumference. So we have the angle that we need to find first is NTP. So here is our tangent and here is our card. So this is the card that is subtended by this angle at the circumference. So this is the card and this is the angle that the card subtends at the circumference which is 25 degrees. So this angle is equal to the angle that the tangent makes with the card. So this angle here is also 25 degrees. So TPN is the only missing angle in the triangle LTP because this angle that we have here is 25 and we have a big triangle LTP. So this angle that we have here is the sum of 90 and 25 and this is also 25. So this is going to be the rest of it. So we're going to take this angle 90 this one 25 and this one 25 from 180 as we have right there so that angle will turn out to be 40 degrees we have verified at least one of the statements that were made in the introduction of the lesson in the exercise we have seen how well examiners can disguise principles that are well known to us one thing that we did not bargain for is the fact that we have to make use of our knowledge of geometry. 
beginning with the things that we learned in primary school. Stuffs like supplementary angles, complementary angles, and the sum of the angles in a triangle resurfaced. This is one great proof that we cannot forget anything that we have learned a long time ago. So we cannot forget anything that we have learned along the way and expect to progress in the subject. It is very important that students practice exercises in this topic because the skills that are necessary to answer similar ones under examination conditions require a certain degree of intimacy with the material.